Danita and Jen. Jen and I are doing our speech on a critical event in our lives. It appears as though we've reached this event coming down two different roads, but yet leading us to the same direction. We're doing our speech on our walk with the Lord. So I'm going to start with mine, and we each have three individual points to present in our presentation. And so I'm going to start with mine, and then I'm going to be mindful of my time, and then receive encouragement through her as she shares her walk with the Lord also. I wasn't always a believer. In fact, about 15 years ago, I wasn't a believer at all. Not that I didn't believe that there wasn't a God, because I did. Just not one that I wanted in my life, or even that I thought I needed to have in my life. Because I was living my life the way I wanted to. It was one big party. And then one day I realized that I did not only want the Lord in my life, that I needed Him in my life to help me go through this life. Otherwise, I would have remained doing the same thing, partying day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. So I want to share three things about my walk with the Lord and three things that he is to me. And the very first one is he's my protector. In my party life, I used to do some real crazy things, and I had a lot of friends that did crazy things with me. And I remember one night where I had just been partying with my best girlfriend. She was a dope dealer, so there was always something going on. And so we were partying all night long. And about 2.30, I was like, okay, I'm going to go home. They're like, why don't you just stay? It's almost daylight. Why don't you just stay here? No, I'm going to go home. And so I left her house, and it took about 20 seconds driving to get up to the road from her house. So I left her house, and it seemed like no sooner than I left her house, I returned to her house, and my car was wrecked. Now, I wasn't walking with the Lord at this time, but I do know that he was protecting me still. So I got back to her house, and everyone's like, I thought you went home. And I'm like, I did, but I just wrecked mine. I'm not going to use the language I used to use back then. I just wrecked my car. No, you didn't. Stop lying. No, I just wrecked my car. So someone went out and verified that I had indeed wrecked my car. So the next morning, well, actually that was the morning, so about two or three more hours when it got daylight, we all walked from her house down to where my car went off the road. And when we looked over, there was nothing but a deep, deep gully. They would have not found me for a while. They would not have found me probably alive. So. Now that I have my walk with the Lord, the only thing that I believe happened is that when my car went off the road, that it swooped right back on the road back to her house. So I was being protected even when I wasn't walking with the Lord. And another incident, during one of the parties that another friend of ours had, she was married, to, just got engaged to a Marine, and we were celebrating not only his new position at his new duty station, but also her getting ready to leave with him to be his wife. So we had been partying all night long, and I went into my room, I closed my door, I put my pajamas on, and I got into my bed. So the next thing I know, my door opens up, and this huge Marine comes into my door and closes it. Okay. I had a bat, a metal bat in my room, but I would have had to get past him to get it. So I'm not going anywhere, and he's like, well, you can't do anything anyway. So, yeah, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do about against this guy? He's like three times my size, and he's a Marine, and they train very well. So, needless to say, uh, whatever his intentions were didn't take place. And he wound up leaving, and I wound up telling my girlfriend's fiance, who was also a Marine, and it wound up getting back to their command and he wound whatever happened to him he deserved it just even with the threat of doing harm to me my lord is my protector <laughs> so the second thing that i want to point out is that he is my provider
we've all heard of the subprime lending and people in just mass quantities losing their homes. I used to be a homeowner and I lost my home. And the day that I became homeless, and I say it like this because since the first day I still had a roof over my head because in my walk I found out that he's my provider. So I stayed at three or four, three different shelters but now I realize that going into those shelters was me being used by the God that I serve to encourage others that were also in the shelters. There's all kinds of reasons why people are in the shelters. It's not just because they're lazy, don't want to work or nothing like that. People were in there for domestic violence. They were in there for their houses burning up. There's all kinds of reasons. Coming out of prison and starting over, you got to start over someplace. So there's all kinds of reasons why people are in the shelters. So the whole time I was in there, never lacked any food, never lacked any clothes, never lacked any electricity, never lacked anything because he's my provider. So now me and my family, we're in our own home again because he's my provider. And the last thing I want to share is that he is my healer. Somewhere in probably about 1998, I was working for an employer in Bremerton, and we offloaded the aircraft carriers when they would come in from their tours out in the water. I wound up getting a serious back injury. Went to the doctor, the doctor's professional knowledge, yes, you have a sciatic pinched nerve. MRI, confirm confirmation. X-rays, confirmation. My back was so damaged that even the time that I'm standing here right now, I would not have been able to do that. So my doctor said, you need to have surgery. And then I started thinking about my mom. When she was alive, she had seven surgeries on her back, and she was in pain up until the day that she left this earth. Oh, no, I'm not having surgery. Mm -mm. So because of my talk with the Lord, one, on one of our Friday night services that we have, Friday nights and Sundays, so on Friday night, the Lord had instructed my pastor to lay hands on those that wanted to come up in faith and receive healings for whatever it was that they were having. And he started at the top of the head, <clears throat> migraines, uh, brain issues, whatever it was, and he worked his way down. And I'm going back on Friday, going back on Friday, and I couldn't wait for him to get to the backs because I knew that I was going up there and receive a healing in my back. So when my pastor laid hands and prayed on me, I fell out, it's called being slain in the spirit, so I fell out, and my head hit the ground Normally there's someone there to catch you. There was no one there that time for me. So my head hit the ground and popped up off the ground. And so what I felt was my head being lifted up off the ground. And when it got laid back down, it felt like a goose down pillow was on my head. Now this is because of my walk with the Lord. And this is because I know this to be true for me. So the next thing that I felt was two hands inside my spine, inside my back area where the sciatic pinch nerve was and I felt this massaging. And not only did I feel two hands, I counted all 10 fingers. Now by the time I got up off the ground, one of our, our fire chiefs that was there, he's one of our deacons, and he came to me and he wanted to immediately look at my eyes to make sure that I was okay from, because my head hit really hard. And so he realized that I was okay, so I went and sat down, healed since March 10th, 2000. And like I said, I could not have stood this long. I could not have bent down. I could not have turned. All the things I'm doing right now before my back got supernaturally healed, I would not have been able to do. And I know that to be true for myself. So I've talked about my walk with the Lord and how he is my protector, and he's still protecting me to this day, that he's still my provider, and that he's still my healer. And not only with my back did he heal, he healed my heart from some serious pain that it was going through in my life. And so I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Jen, so that we can be encouraged. I know I will be at least encouraged by her story about her walk with the Lord. So here's Jen. <laughs> 